وطز كولون كنسة ركت الكنسة كولو ركت الكنسر وطز سي سي ار سي and CRC colon cancer is a disease which is a malignant tumor arising from the inner lining of the large intestine large intestine it has other names like large bowel and colon this tumor or growth in the colon, the most common site is on the left side, meaning the descending colon and the sigmoid, and it is about 75%. On the right side, which is the ascending colon, the incidence is the right side, it is 20%. And this tumor, it starts very small micro tumor about 0.5 cubic millimeter and it is always in our body micro tumors and how do we know that because in autopsy of women at the age of 40 to 50 died because of a car accident or any accidents they dissect them they find up to 40 percent micro tumors in the breast in men dead men at the age of 50 to 60 years they dissect them and they found up to 50 percent micro tumor in their prostate of course prostate cancer it is the first cancer in men in the united states when we reach the age of 70 years old when they dissect these people both men and women almost 100 percent they have microtumor in the thyroid gland. Why do I say this? Because if you look to the graph of colon cancer, and of course it is called colorectal cancer, meaning both colon cancer and rectal cancer, you would see that the graph on the y-axis, which is the perpendicular line, they put the H, and on the x-axis, which is the horizontal, they put the incidence of disease. If you look to this graph, you will see there is a rising incidence of colorectal cancer above the age of 50. So 50 years old, it is used in the United States as a cutoff point for screening of the population. Because age and 50 years old, there is more incidence of colorectal cancer in this group. But also it could happen in younger age group, in young adults. And young adult, the cutoff point in United States, some believe it is 39 years old. And this is very important to screen those cases who are at high risk. In colon cancer, the good point is, and I always look for the good point and the hope, that there are modifiable risk factors, meaning there are factors in the environment we could change in our lifestyle, and this will reduce the risk of developing colon cancer in up to 50% of cases, and some believe even up to 70%. And even if you have the colon cancer and you survive the treatment, you reduce your chances of recurrence if you practice healthy lifestyle by 30% to 40%. And this is amazing because now we start to understand that we all have bad genes, but the genes are not the cause of a tumor, of the colon cancer. It is the environment. And the environment, it is called in science, epigenetic. Epi means above. Gene, it is above the gene. The environment trigger the bad genes. If 
we live in healthy lifestyle. And if we live healthy lifestyle, then these factors will trigger the good genes. And what does it mean, genes and triggers and all this? You see, the risk factors which is established now in science is the food, the red meat and the processed food. And also uh, tobacco smoking, number three, alcohol drinking, number four is overweight, obesity, prediabetes, diabetes type 2, uh, chronic metabolic diseases. These factors are modifiable factors because it is related to the lifestyle. Of course, the, there are factors which are unmodifiable. For example, the age. The older we become, the more we are liable to have colon cancer. Also, the sex. It is more common in male gender or in male sex than in female, slightly more. And for example, IBD, which is an inflammatory bowel disease. But ulcerative colitis and Crohn, which are the main groups in IBD, they don't develop colon cancer from the first day they develop the inflammation. No, it takes time. They usually develop the cancer or the colon cancer after 10 years of IBD or inflammatory bowel disease, and sometimes even after 20 years or 30 years, even if the inflammatory bowel disease is silent. There is something going on to have this cancer. So why this cancer, as we said, start as small tumor and then it will enlarge because these cells inside the lining of the colon, and usually it is a gland cells, and most of the colon cancer, it is adenocarcinoma. Adeno meaning glands and carcinoma. In about 85% of cases, up to 95%, 90%, it depends which population you are studying, it depends which race you are studying, it depends the ethnicity, the ethnic groups, uh, the geographical area. For example, in the United States, they find that the African American, they have more incidence of colon cancer and they have high incidence of mortality rate than the Hispanic and the Asian group. Also, there is high incidence in people living in Alaska, much higher in people living in Alaska. And they think because these people, they eat high fat and animal meat. You see, one of the modifiable risk factor is the red meat, processed meat like uh, hot dog, uh, sausages, fried food, French fries, high fat food, high salt food, high sugar food. If you want to have a cancer, eat more sugar. Because cancer love the sugar, and the sugar give it energy to grow. What is cancer? This is small cell, microscopic cells, they start to grow and divide out of control. And how do they do this? They are clever. They secrete chemicals which inhibit our immune system. And sometimes they make our immune system friendly to them. So our immune system is stopped to attack them. And how come? Because in our body, we have mechanisms, check and balance. Because our cells, they go through cell growth and cycle of cell growth and go into different stages and they divide also. But during this process of division of a normal healthy cell, there will be mistakes. And if there are mistakes and the cell detects that there is error in the DNA or in the process of the growth, then they stop the cell. They arrest it. Just like a policeman arrest a bad person. Arrested. The cell stop. The cell stop. And 
it gives time to the cell to repair its error. But if the cell cannot repair the DNA, then the cell has to die. There is a program which is called a programmed cell death. And this is a clean death. It is not like the death of the human cell due to injury or necrosis. This death, the cell will be fragmented. It will be bagged, small things in small bags. And then it will be presented, it will be presented outside of the healthy cell. You see, like us, every week we collect our rubbish, put it in a black bag and a recycling bag, and we put it outside our fences. And the council will come and collect these bags. So this is what happened in the cell. They divided into small pieces, put it in bags, in membrane, and then put it outside on the membrane of the healthy cell. Then the macrophages, the cell, and other blood cells, which are part of our immune system, they will pass by and then notice that this is dirt, this is bad, this is dead. So they eat it. And macrophage mean, macro mean big, and phage mean eating, so they are big eaters. And of course, the immune system, it has many uh, chemicals, many cells to deal with this problem. But the cancer cells, they start to evade the defense mechanism of the body. We have hundreds of defense mechanisms in the body, and to mention a few, for example, the immune system, the microbiome in the gut, the angiogenesis. Angiogenesis means uh, angio mean blood vessel. This is mean formation, meaning formation of a blood vessels. So the body produces new blood vessel in normal healthy processes. For example, when I do surgery and cut the abdominal wall and cut the uterine wall, then I suture. But there is gap between the cutting edge. So the blood vessel will grow into the gap and then repair the defect between the tissues. And so this angiogenesis, it is normally done in our cells and in our body. But always it is in balance. The problem arises when the angiogenesis is out of balance. So we mentioned the uh, immune system, the microbiome, the angiogenesis, and the repair of the DNA. There are many mechanisms, switches on, switches off in the DNA, inside the nucleus of every cell, to look after what is written, what is written from this DNA. You see, DNA is a code of information. It consists of four alphabetical letters. Of course, they are not like the alphabet of A, B, C, D, but they are. They are nitrogenous bases. And why they are called nitrogenous bases? Because they contain nitrogen atom. And these bases on the DNA, and why I'm talking about the DNA? Because the origin of cancer, it is changes in, our, in the DNA of the cell. And it is called the mutation, they change. So the DNA is usually is double citron, helix. Helix means like a spiral ladder. And this, on the ladder, imagine the ladder, you are going to the loft. The edge, the backbone, is consists of ribose sugar, which is, car, uh, which is sugar with five carbons. And these carbon atoms are numbered. Carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. Carbon 5 is attached to phosphate group. And if you face this nucleotide, which is inside the DNA, if you face it face to face, then in front of you will be the ribose, sugar. And on the left-hand side, the carbon number five will be attached to phosphate group. Carbon one, it is attached to nitrogenous group. And carbon two is attached to hydroxyl group, OH. And this is in RNA, ribonucleic acid. But in deoxyribonucleic acid, from the name, D mean no, oxy mean no oxygen, and so it is the same like RNA, 
but carbon too, it is attached to hydrogen. There is no oxygen. And this is good for the DNA. Why? Because the DNA is now stable. Less oxygen atom, less problem, so it is more stable. Carbon-3 is attached to hydroxyl group, OH group, in both DNA and RNA. So now we go to the letters which are in our DNA, which is the information of our life, of our disease, of our age. And these are written, and imagine it is books kept in the library. And the library is the DNA. And how this library organize these letters in these books. So if you look to the DNA, they are double citron, we separate it. We make it one citron, then they look. There is a nitrogenous group, which is called C. Imagine it is capital C, it is rounded. It is paired with capital G. They are both rounded and they are both capital. Then there is another letter, which is on the DNA, it is A. And this paired with, always paired, it is specific. It doesn't accept any mistake. It is paired with T. And how do you remember? You remember C and G because they are round, because you write them in capital letter, and you wrote them, you, we are talking English, then the opening is to the left. So you remember this. Of course, this is simple. This is not exact, but this is simple. And A, T, remember the at in your email. A and T. And now you got the four letters of your DNA, the genetic code of your life, of your disease, of your cancers, of your diseases, of your how long you live, these four letters. These are two groups. And how you remember the group? Remember, pure as gold, so purine, A is L A, and G, guanine. So, purine is the name of the group. It is a small word. And this is, because it is a small, not a small house, so it have extension. So it is two rings. So purine is two rings. And what are these two rings? What are the two letters, the chemical letters, the nitrogenous bases in our DNA? They are as A, adenine, gold or gold, pure as gold or pure as gold, G, guinea, two. That's it. But the pyrimidine, P-Y-R-I-M-I-D-I-N, this is a big base, it is big, it is big house, so it is single, it is single ring. And how do you remember it? Write the letter cut, C-U-T in capital letter. C is cytosine, U is uracil, T is thiamine. Okay, now we pair them. C, cytosine, paired with G, which is a guanine. Then A is adenine, it is paired with T, which is thiamine. Finish. This is your DNA. If I want to do RNA, it is the same, the same. But I will come as an enzyme in front of the DNA, and then I will pair myself. Because remember, it is single strand. So we are exposing the letter, which is at the top, C and A. So I come as an enzyme. In front of the C, I will put G, which is a guinea, in both DNA and RNA. And A, I will put T, thiamine. It's always like this. I know this A go with T. And this is, you made now a piece of DNA, which is G and T. And the template on which you copy at the top it is G and A. But if I want to make RNA from the DNA, I will come as an enzyme, and then the first strand, we said it is C and A. So I will put G 
pair it with C, the same, like DNA. But when I come to A, I will pair it with uracil, not thymine. This is the difference between the RNA and the DNA. So now remember, you have two points of difference between the RNA and DNA. The first is in the sugar, carbon 2. Carbon 2 is attached to hydroxyl group OH in RNA, but it is attached to hydrogen atom only in deoxyribonucleic acid DNA. And why I am talking about this? Because I want you to know the basic, because a lot of talking about genetic, genetic sequences, and you have to understand, and I try to make it simple, and then I will go through with you gradually to make you know what is DNA, what is RNA. It is not complicated, it is simple. And I think if you understand it, you will be happy to understand your genetic code. So now, because of the genetic sequences, we now study the genes of the tumor. And this shows us that the tumor of the colon is very complicated, it's not easy. So I want you to imagine the colonic cancer or colon cancer as a three-dimensional structure changing over time scale, meaning it is dynamic with time and also in space. It moves in space because when the cells grow, they move. They uh, penetrate the mucosa. They penetrate the colon wall. They want to go outside. They want to spread to the other organs of the body, and this is called metastasis. Metastasis in Latin means immigration, mean moving. So they move to uh, colonize other organs, and the metastasis from the colon and the upper third of the rectum, it go to the liver. But the metastasis from the lower two-third of the rectum, it go to the lung. Why? Because there is difference in the blood supply of the colon and the rectum. So now, I want you to know that colon cancer is a tumor, malignant tumor in the lining or the inner lining of the colon, which means in this context is it is affecting the beginning of the colon, which is the cecum, which is the blind end. It is called cecum because in Latin means blind. Then ascending colon, transverse colon. Of course, between the ascending colon and the transverse colon, there is a turn, which is called hepatic flexure. Then the transverse colon, it comes into splenic flexure, then comes to the descending colon, then this is attached to the sigmoid colon. This is the colon cancer. And in a clinical practice and in research, they use colorectal cancer to mean both colon cancer and rectal cancer. But now, there are a new school of thought, especially the German group, they think this is wrong. And there are two different clinical entities, meaning there is colon cancer and rectal cancer. Because sometimes what is happening now is some patients, they have colon cancer and they write it down, colorectal cancer. Even if the patient has no rectal cancer or sometimes the patient has rectal cancer and then they write it down, colorectal cancer, although they have no colon cancer. And why we think they are different entities? Because the colon is bigger. It is wider. The diameter of the cecum is about 9 cm, but the diameter will, will become narrower as we go to distally. It is very narrow at the sigmoid. So as we go up in the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, it becomes narrower. And it is longer. It is one uh, and a half meter or two meters, it depends. And so the space of the colon to be exposed to the carcinogen, it's bigger the space. So the concentration of the carcinogen in the surface area of the colon is less than the rectum. The rectum, if we take 
from the top of the rectum. Of course, the rectum is a three part, the upper third, the middle third, and the lower third. And the upper third is attached to the sigmoid. And the lower edge of the lower third is attached to the anal canal through a line which is called dented line. Dented mean like a so, so teeth, so teeth, dented, like dentist. Anyway, if you see it in the anatomy or in the histology and in a microscope, you see the line is like a regular, a regular. It's not a straight line. So the why we say the rectal cancer is different from colon cancer and it should be documented like this because colon the upper third of the colon of the, the upper third of the rectum it is intraperitoneal and when we say intraperitoneal mean it is inside the abdomen and it is mobile and it is covered by the peritoneum and this make it easier for the surgeon you know, this is very important in surgery. For example, if we study the colon, the cecum and the appendix, and the sigmoid colon, and the upper third of the rectum are, and the transverse colon are intraperitoneal, meaning inside the abdominal cavity, meaning they are covered by peritoneum, meaning they are mobile. But the ascending colon, only the anterior surface is covered by the peritoneum, and the descending colon also, only the inferior surface is covered by the peritoneum. And this makes the colon fixed to the posterior abdominal wall. The upper third of the rectum is intraperitoneal. The middle third is controversial till now. Till now. Some people, they say it is retroperitoneal. Some people, they say it is uh, intraperitoneal. Some people, they say, yes, it is intra, but only the anterior surface of the middle third and the lateral wall are covered with the peritoneum. But most of the people, they think that the lower two-thirds of the rectum are retroperitoneal, meaning behind the peritoneum. They are fixed. And why this is important? Because the surgeon who do surgery for rectal carcinoma, he has to be more skilled. He should know the anatomy and the blood supply, the arterial supply, the venous supply, the nerve supply, the lymphatic drainage of the upper third of the colon the middle third of the of the the upper third of the rectum, the middle third of the rectum, and the lower third. This is very very important because the rectum it sit in the pelvis, and in front of it there is the secondary sex organ in both male and female, and this is very very important to know the difference. So that's why the behavior, the biological behavior, of Rectal carcinoma is different from the biological behavior of colon cancer. And of course, I will go in details about the signs and symptoms and everything in other videos. But now, I want to make it short. So now I clarify that colorectal cancer, we should not use it anymore. But sometimes I will use it if I want to know it is colon cancer and rectal cancer because there are similarities but there is also a distinction there is differences and these differences are very well known and examined in the living patient as well as in the cadaver cadaver mean dead patients okay so now we explain the names cc mean colon cancer rc mean rectal cancer CRC mean colorectal cancer. The point is, I gave some hope because there are risk factors for colon cancer and rectal cancer and colorectal cancer. And these risk factors, they are modifiable and there are unmodifiable risk factors. And this gives us hope that we could look after our health and our lifestyle. 
to change our to change our system now i will do statistics and a few numbers to show you how cancer of the colon is deadly and how it is very common all over the world so so colorectal cancer this is some statistics and figure colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer all over the world colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in men and the second most common cancer in women of course this is excluding skin cancer because skin cancer it is very very common all over the world in both men and women if we forget about the skin cancer then the colon cancer or colorectal cancer will become the third most common cancer in the world and in both men and women all over the world but this year in 2020 in United States there will be an estimated 1,004,000 104,610 new cases of colon cancer and 43,340 new cases of rectal cancer diagnosed in the USA. Although the majority of these colorectal cancer are in adults, the age is 50 years old and older, but 17,930, almost 18,000, 12% of the cases of the colon cancer and the rectal cancer will be diagnosed in individuals younger than the age 50. The equivalent of 49 new cases per day. So now it is becoming more common in young adults and especially the rectal cancer, it is more common. Although the overall incidence is low, but now they notice that there is an increase in young age group. And as we said, the young age is a cutoff is 39 years old, but it could happen in even children and teenagers. So there are 1.8 million in new cases in 2018 in the United States of cancer with the colon cancer and the rectal cancer. The top 25 countries with the highest rate of colon cancer and rectal cancer in 2018 for both men and women are the following. Number one rank is Hungary and the incidence is 51.2. This incidence is age standardized rate per 100,000 always. When we want to compare between population, we have to do age standardized rate. Meaning, if I study one population in one area, I don't need to do standardization because I will see the disease and the disease burden, it is the number of cases I am counting. But if I want to compare between population of different age group in different countries, we have to do standardization. And this means that there is difference in respect of the age. And the age has a profound influence on the risk of dying from cancer. So the age should be standardized so that we can understand the difference between different population and of course this is statistics and calculation it is done by statisticians so the number one country is hungary 51.2 second rank is south korea 44.5 slovakia which is part of czechoslovakia it is divided into slovakia and czech republic and the incidence is 43.8 and number four is norway which is 42.9 and then I will jump to Japan, which is number eight, 
38.9, and UK is number 24. The incidence is 32.1, and number 25 is Belarus, which is 31.8. And this is all H standardized rate per 100,000. But if we study colorectal cancer in men, then the first rank will be Hungary. And the incidence is 70.6. Number two, Slovakia, 60.7. Number three, South Korea, 59.5. Number four, Slovenia, which is 58.9. Number seven rank is Japan, 49.1. And number 10 is Norway, which is 46.9. If we study colorectal cancer, women, then number one come Norway. So the age standardized rate per 100,000 population is 39.3. So women in Norway, they have highest incidence. Number two is Hungary, 36.8. Now third rank is Denmark, 36.6. Number four, Singapore, 34. Number 10th, Jap Japan, which is 29.6. 19th is UK, which is 27, and 20th is Ireland, 26.4. It is very common disease, and it is deadly disease. And the good thing is that we could prevent it by living a healthy lifestyle. Of course, there are unmodifiable risk factors, like, as we said, the age, male gender, or male sex, the history of colon cancer in the family, the history of colon cancer in the same person. And there are, of course, genes in certain people which are bad genes for colon cancer. And this is, it, called, it is called, for example, this, it will make syndromes. And this is about 4%, 4 to 5% of the cases of colon cancer. And 1% is called Familial adenomatous polyposis. Familial F adenomatous A and polyposis mean P. Familial family adenomatous mean gland. Polyposis mean many polyps. These patients, if you examine them, and usually they are examined early, not at the age of 50, earlier than this, because these patients, they are liable to develop polyps and thousands of polyps. So the surgeon who look in the colon and see 100 polyps or more, they advise total colectomy, meaning the colon has to be removed because these cases, if you leave them, they will have colon cancer in 100% of the cases. But if there is one, colonus, uh, if one polyp, then they will cut it, send it for histopathology, and do the follow-up. The other gene which causes a disease which is called H, meaning hereditary, N, non-polyposis, C, colorectal, C, cancer. So it is written as NH, P, C, C. And this is about 3 to 4% of colon cancer. So these high-risk group, they need early screening. And to reduce the incidence of colon cancer, of course, changing in the healthy lifestyle, and also screening help to reduce the incidence. But the problem is, for example, in the United States, about only one-third they are screened, and 60% they are not screened, especially the young people. So. This is very important to tackle this point because young people, they are not screened as the old. And screening is by many ways, by colonoscope, which is the camera and the scope, and also by a stool examination to see the blood. And there are specific tests which can diagnose human blood, specific, and not it is from the meat the patient eat. And also we could detect Tumor markers, meaning a protein that tumor secrete, carcinoma, embryonic antigen. 
meaning it is a protein, antigen is a, which is secreted when we are embryo inside our mothers. And why the tumor secreted? Because the tumor is dividing, it is growing, it is like a pregnancy. You see, tumors, you could, you could make them like a pregnancy. For example, the fetus develop like one cell, egg is fertilized by the sperm, then it starts to divide, like the tumor divides. And then when it becomes big, it needs a blood supply. So it invades the uterine wall, it makes the network of a blood vessel, which is called angiogenesis, meaning a new blood vessels are formed, a new formation of blood vessels. And this is called the afterbirth, the placenta. And when the fetus is growing, it secretes certain chemicals which make the mother friendly. The mother does not reject the fetus, although the fetus, it's foreign to her, but she accepts it from the immunological point of view. She accepts the fetus to grow. And the same the tumor makes with the body. It makes the immune body to accept it and tolerate it. And when the tumor spread, pass through the colon wall, then spread to the other organ. In a pregnancy, sometimes it happens the same. For example, the placenta sometimes, in patients who have many cesarean section, the afterbirth will pass through the wound of the uterus and invade the wall of the uterus and go out to implant itself as a budding, as a new plant on the pelvis. And this is very, very serious condition, which is called placenta accreta. Placenta accreta means accreta is adherent. And of course, this is a grade. But the worst grade is when the placenta and the blood vessel transfers the uterine wall and go into the pelvis. And I have a patient like this, which I operated on her. Of course, the baby was alive, the mother is alive, but she needed 55 units of blood. And it is hell, the oozing, the bleeding. And how did I control the bleeding? Not from the first time, because it oozed. So I uh, pack the bleeders with gauze, with packs, then leave her in the intensive care unit. Next day, open the abdomen, take the packs. A few days until the bleeding is stopped, then I close the abdomen in layer. And how the abdominal wall heal? It heal by angiogenesis. This angiogenesis is very important to remember and to know because it is part of our physiology, it is part of our health, and it is very important also in our diseases because the blood is very essential to bring nutrient and oxygen to every cell of our body. And thank you very much.